Good afternoon again, and uh, thank you for joining us. My name is Roy. I'm the product engineer here at uh, Mitsubishi Electric, MEAP for short, and it's part of my role to explore our product range and also to include our partners' products and bring them together to address a specific needs in the business market. So today I'm going to talk about the benefit of AI for maintenance and what the topic and subject matter is and how we address them as Mitsubishi Electric. So uh, as what I said, we'll be talking about the benefits of AI in maintenance. Uh, there is actually quite a range of topics I want to cover as uh, this is the introductory session. Some of the topics may be a bit dry, but uh, in the first instance, I'll be covering the topic around why we actually look or provide maintenance and its performance and management, uh, managing performance of assets. Next, I will talk about the market trend, uh, what we see and present some statistics. And finally, that will lead to what predictive maintenance is. From there on, I'll talk about how is that linked to the ongoing digital, digitalization team and digital transformation. Finally, we'll talk about some of our solutions that we have here uh, from Mitsubishi Electric that are positioned in this space. So to start off, I'd like to talk about uh, productivity. Productivity in the manufacturing sector, in the constant drive to improve performance of manufacturing assets in order to maintain competitiveness in various markets. So uh, when we look at GMP, or good manufacturing practice and the measures or we know as KPIs that are in place, uh, productivity and effectiveness efficiency is in the is in the market and there are two of this that stands out. Two of this that stands out are the overall equipment effectiveness and the total effective equipment performance or the OEE and TIP for short. So if you look at the OEE, it's actually an algorithm that is uh, based on three metrics, which are availability of an asset or piece of plant in terms of uh, when it's available for actual manufacturing, its performance in terms of the cycle time or throughput, and the quality in terms of the quality of goods or piece, uh, whichever it's producing. And in conjunction with that, there is a tip which is actually a measuring of a uh, utilization of asset. This is in fact represented, uh, representing the true capacity of the production plant in terms of what the asset makes up in the, in the manufacturing. So actually what is interesting is that uh, maintenance does impact on both of these metrics and there are particular fragments of those metrics that are affected. So I would like to talk about those uh, which are availability and utilization. So availability in terms of unplanned downtime that factors into the figures. This is represented by breakdown and uh, the more breakdown we have equals the less available machine it is, which is equals to less OEE. And it will ultimately impact the performance of the machine and equipment. For utilization, that actually factors in planned downtime which includes plan maintenance. So you can see that there's a bit of balancing act here. It means that you want to plan maintenance to reduce the likelihood of a breakdown. But at the same time, that plan maintenance does eat into the capacity of your plant, or to put it another way, the utilization that is actually making stuff. So there's a balance to be played within these two. So having said that, let's take a look at the various maintenance regime that are available for operation or typically used. So there are three of this, reactive maintenance, preventative maintenance, and predictive maintenance, which we will be talking about for the majority of this webinar. So in turn, each of this reactive maintenance is essentially when you fix when the equipment is, has failed, Preventative maintenance is when you set up a schedule to do a periodic, uh, periodic maintenance. This is done to try to reduce the chances of the machine failing. And finally, predictive maintenance, which is where we try to use analytics and try to predict failure before it happens so that the maintenance team can react and plan accordingly. 
Now each of these has a different play uh, on the two matrix that I've previously introduced. And if I take this out in turn, in terms of a reactive maintenance, there has been a, it will be a negative impact obviously on the availability of the plant. Essentially, you're running a piece of equipment or machine until it breaks. So effectively, before you look to actually maintain it. So there's a, therefore the plan or available time for it to manufacture has been reduced. Preventative maintenance look at to remedy against that by increasing the availability using a periodic maintenance regime to reduce the chance of failure. But as such, you are taking away the utilization of the machine and you are actually eating into its capacity uh, to produce things. So although there's an up in availability, there will be a negative impact in utilization. Lastly, uh, we look at predictive maintenance. So actually, this improves your availability because you're trying to access or analyze or predict the failure ahead of time. So you only look to actually provide maintenance activity when it's needed. So it's not being done on a periodic main, uh, basis. It's done on a as when required basis. So it provides a better utilization for your assets. So having said all this, uh, let's just take a look at the example. Actually, when preventive maintenance doesn't work, where we can see why it doesn't work and uh, later on I'll explain to you how is it addressed. So the company I want to talk about is called uh, Mountain's Malt. I'm not picking on this uh, for any other reason other than uh, they are also, they are actually a customer of our Europe division. And the information I'm going to talk today is uh, publicly available. And both our Europe office and Mountain's have previously pub publicized this uh, incident before. So a bit uh, information about the Mountain's themselves. They are a manufacturer of malts, and it's a uh, malts is used predominantly in the brewing and food industry. So they have uh, two manufacturing plants in the UK. First is in Brightlington, and second in Stowe Market. Uh, it's in Brightlington plant that most uh, mostly produce malts for mountains, and this is the plant where the incident where I am going to discuss actually occurred. So uh, this plant is actually uh, responsible for their key production, which is about 95,000 tons per annum of malt that's actually produced. So if we took, uh, we take a brief look at the how malting process is, there are three components to it. Steeping, which is when you introduce water to the grains. Germanization, when you provide the environment where the grain to germinate and kilning, which is effectively where you kill off the germanization process at a predefined point where you will get the product you want in terms of malt. So this two process of uh, germanization and kilning is very reliant on uh, circulation of air or airflow around the plant, as you see in the schematic shown here. In particular, controlling of that airflow uh, around the process are by large fans or very large motors. In fact, the motor that the killing plant has is actually a 350 kilowatt motor. So it is in this particular area uh, of the plant that mountains uh, experience an issue. So we will talk into more details at the killing process. So the engineering, the engineering team associated with the plant uh, were following a preventative maintenance regime. In fact, there was a regular routine maintenance check on the equipment within the cleaning process. But this particular motor is housed in a position where it's particularly inaccessible and difficult to get. So uh, what the team were not aware of was that uh, there was an uh, imminent bearing failure within the motor. So when this eventually happened, it caused a catastrophic failure. And obviously with no airflow through the process, which uh, resulted in shutting down the process. So because of the nature of the motor assembly in the process, and there was a significant downtime uh, taken to actually replace a new motor. So without giving away how much downtime it took, it's actually, it actually took quite a significant amount of time. So therefore, it affected their production as they had two kilns on site 
that immediately reduced their capacity down to 50%. And of course, in turn, affected their revenue. And not just that, it also affected their supply chain because this company feeds both the food and brewing market. So having said that, that was the problem which occurred from a fan or motor bearing failure, uh, which even, even though they have a preventive maintenance regime, and uh, later on in the presentation, I'll talk about how Mantons address this and having had this issue and uh, make sure that it doesn't happen again. So having spoke about uh, preventive and predictive maintenance, so I'm just going to present some statistics, facts and figures about the maintenance sector and its current state of play. I think this is uh, actually pretty interesting. So although I have uh, suggested earlier in my presentation that actually uh, predictive maintenance provide a better solution uh, as maintenance regime, it's not necessary at this point in time the most popular or the most predominant re regime in fact. So if you look at the figures, the bottom left slide, you can see that this is based on the report from Foss and Sullivan. Uh, preventive maintenance is still the most popular maintenance strategy that is still used. Uh, it's also used in Montan's episode, which I uh, discussed with you earlier. So they are still using a preventive maintenance. So that is actually followed by reactive maintenance and predictive maintenance is actually quite a way down the list. In fact, uh, if we look at the time spent on preventive maintenance, 34% of facilities actually spend about more than 30 hours a week on scheduled maintenance. That in itself represents a significant cost. So not only are you eating into your plant's capacity to manufacture, you're actually introducing costs into the business in terms of periodic maintenance. So it's a double hit. So how is this addressed? While we see an increase in uh, uptake of uh, predictive maintenance, uh, and I'm providing some figures here that shows the growth of the market over the next three to four years, you can see that they are not exponential growth, but there is certainly a growth pattern here. So you have to ask yourself, why is that? Why is it uh, growing? Obviously, uh, there is a driver from it from the perspective that uh, in, it increases the performance of the plant, but what else facilitates that growth? So I'd like to give you some uh, takeaway from this slide. So just to summarize here, predictive, uh, preventive maintenance is uh, actually relevant. It's actually a culture that uh, preventive maintenance is still has uh, a very strong culture in the maintenance sector. Significant revenue uh, is lost from downtime but it's a step change in growth in the predictive maintenance market. So this is where I'll come to one of the reasons why the growth is occurring in the predictive maintenance market. So it's actually facilitated by what we call the digital transformation and digitalization. Okay, so I'll introduce that. So digital transformation process. So I'll try to provide a very quick definition here. It is the disruptive business transformation process but it's underpinned at its heart by technology and processes that improve and provide data. In this case of a manufacturing plant from the shop floor. So this growth of availability of data from the shop floor that enables us uh, to interpret the data in terms of analytics. And finally, the data will become predictive maintenance regime or solutions. But you can see here is actually still in the early days. So according to this statistics uh, that is shown here, this is a questionnaire to maintenance managers as to how they feel about this uh, digital transformation process at present and how will it impact their job function. Surprising enough, uh, it's still uh, fairly low. So there is still a lot of work uh, that we could do here in terms of unlocking the potential of uh, predictive maintenance. And I think another facilitator we have here is uh, when we talk about the ease of being able to get data from the shop floor as part of digital transformation process. Another factor that is at play here is in the last bullet of this slide uh, that has been the significant growth stimulated by this digitalization process in terms of machine learning and AI platform used for analytics and used as an example in analytics associated to predictive maintenance. 
Okay, so this will be my last statistics today. So here uh, you will see the expected growth in a predictive maintenance market through the application of AI and machine learning platform. As you can see, the growth is significant since uh, 2018 and you will is expected to grow till 2022 and over. So uh, Mitsubishi itself has a part to play here, which I'll come on next. So having said, uh, said all those about uh, the role of digital transformation and digitalization, let's just uh, define what is uh, predictive maintenance actually is. So I get the, I have the definition here on the screen and I actually just read this out as a whole. So I think it's quite straight to the point and it demonstrates what we are looking to achieve. So uh, predictive maintenance utilizes data collected from each machine based on its normal pattern of operation or performance and minute changes or inconsistency with the baseline data is detected by sensor will eventually lead to subsequent alert so that the operator can reasonably predict the necessity for maintenance work. This way, any damage or fault remains isolated, so other parts remain unaffected and total equipment failure is avoided. So uh, there, this is the definition. And one of the things that it addresses here is in fact, we are actually looking at data. So what data? So what particular data are we looking at? And we want to measure in order to predict or a failure in a piece of machine or plant. So this is the key part in predictive maintenance. Underpinning uh, predictive maintenance is a term called condition-based monitoring. And it's finding the right condition to monitor in order to predict the health of the piece of equipment or asset. So today, there has been a number of leaders in this field or leading condition-based monitoring parameters. So we'll look at uh, in order to predict the health of the equipment. I have listed a few here. Vibration, fluid analysis, infrared thermography, and others. So if you take a look uh, in them, in detail, actually very specific types of application or plants or even assets. For example, we use a vibration condition, vibration condition based monitoring in the case of rotating machineries or moving parts. Use fluid analysis in the example of looking at the oil viscosity within gearbox or compressors. We also use infrared thermography where we are looking at things like electrical circuits in terms of heat generator. So these are the three conditions that is typically used in the industry now to identify and also to be used as predictive maintenance. So looking at this data, what is it we are looking for? So here I have a graph of a typical machine operating life cycle where the failure rate is represented on the y-axis, the time on the x-axis. It's a typical flattened U-shape, where in terms of the failure rate, the two ends of the spectrum is where you typically get most failures. So in the early stage of the operating life cycle of the equipment, perhaps through the installation or commissioning, failure rates are higher. After that, there will be a period of time where the asset is working according to requirement, and there will come a point in time where it will start to have a degradation in the performance of the asset. And what we are doing with condition-based monitoring is we are trying to identify as early on as possible at the point where the asset starts to degrade. So we can plan accordingly. And one of the things that starts off as preventative maintenance is that we do lifespan calculation. So we effectively know after a certain number of run hours, perhaps we should perform maintenance. But that does not reflect, actually reflect the individual operation of the machine. So therefore, uh, that may change. And predictive maintenance gives us a better way of understanding at which point of the degradation starts, we can react accordingly. So just to summarize, I think uh, the advantages of uh, predictive maintenance are as follows. It reduces downtime because you are able to predict or analyze ahead of time when a piece of equipment will fail, therefore react accordingly. It reduces maintenance costs 
because there is no need for routine maintenance. Instead, uh, you are maintaining as and when necessary. It does reduce uh, repair and overhaul time. And the reason why it reduces all this is because uh, you are aware as soon as the machine starts to degrade and often the repair and remedy work that is needed to be done is less than when a complete failure happens to the equipment. It actually also improves uh, operator safety because being aware of a potential failure enables the maintenance team to react accordingly, prepare the necessary action to take before any potential failure which will cause safety occurs. And as I mentioned in the beginning of my presentation, this actually increased the production uh, manufacturing uptime through OEE and TIP figures for both the planned and unplanned activity. So it, it increases the performance of the asset as well. And of course, and of course uh, it does help support a reduction of waste. Obviously, material going through a broken machine will likely end up in the reject bin. So the less breakdown equals the less waste material generated. And finally, after collecting all this data from the shop floor, from the asset itself, and with all this data collected, you can actually do a more in-depth study and find other effective, effective ways that could be applied to the machine to further improve its performance. So all in, uh, this is a very positive step forward in the field of maintenance. So just to summarize, so there are various parts of a predictive maintenance strategy because uh, I'll be using this uh, when I start to talk about the solution Mitsubishi Electric uh, have in this field. So when you put together predictive maintenance solution, you need some form of a non-invasive condition monitoring. And as I, as I have mentioned before, you have vibration, temperature, pressure, and many other parameters. So having found a condition, you you obviously collect the data, you aggregate it, you cleanse the data, and finally you look to analyze that data to understand how that parameter changes over time and to find for when failure will occur. So there are uh, three components. These are the three components which are key to predictive maintenance strategy. So it's non-invasive monitoring, data collection, and analytical tools to actually look at the data to make meaningful decisions from it in terms of predicting when will there likely be a failure. So the reason why we do this, uh, we want to maintain and increase production. And what has been a great facilitator for actually uh, adoption of predictive maintenance as given in this code here, one of the facilitators has been the rise of digital transformation. This has caused an explosion of device on the market that enables us to get data from a piece of equipment in a non-evasive fashion and then operate on that data to provide meaningful information. And this technology are available, of course, through also Mitsubishi Electric. At this point, I'd like to talk about uh, Mitsubishi Electric's, uh, what we can offer in this view. And I'm going to take you to, through three examples of predictive maintenance solution that are offered by us. Uh, these are Smart Condition Monitoring, or SCM for short, H-based analytics, and Embedded AI. Uh, that is uh, beginning to appear in most of our latest generation of products, and most certainly will be rolled out in future generation too. And we brand this as MySAT. So first uh, is the solution we brand as Smart Condition Monitoring, SCM. This uh, solution is possible, is made possible because of our e-factory uh, alliance partner, uh, Scheffler. Scheffler is a bearing manufacturer and they have been the domain expertise in this field in terms of understanding, rotating and moving machineries. So they have the sensor on the left here, which you can see, which is used as part of our SCM solution. The sensor itself uh, is a small piece of kit which uh, monitors vibration. It uses a uh, Fourier analysis on the vibration data and together with the know-how built within this kit itself, it's able to alert the user the likelihood of a failure. So it's a non-intrusive device, very easy to install. Communication is via Ethernet 
back to the data collector tool and it's very easy to set up. So this sensor also measure temperatures, but uh, for our SCM solution, we typically only use the vibration parameter. So just a little bit discussion on vibration monitoring and what it's good for. As I mentioned earlier regarding condition-based monitoring, we choose the right tool for the right job. So this tool is great on specific type of rotating uh, machinery. I've listed some uh, on the screen here. It's very good at actually uh, looking for bearing damages, coupling misalignment, or even gear damage. And it can actually be used for other applications when combined with other condition-based monitoring device, for example, cavitation at pumps or even phase failure. So how does this device work? So uh, for this example, we are looking at bearing failure. So at the right, at the very end of the graph, we'll see the it has completely failed. But before that, uh, you'll see that actually we can get data from temperature, which gives the, the user some form of indication that it's likely to fail. Noise is the, the other one. But if you look at vibration, in particular, it happens very early on, on the stage. So this shows that it's a very good condition to monitor so as to be able to predict failure. So if you look at uh, the simplified diagram at the bottom right, this shows how the sensor actually detects changes in condition. The graph on the left shows the normal operation. The graph on the right shows that there's an issue with the piece of machine. And the sensor will alert the customer that there is a change in condition. And the user might need to do further investigation to actually see what is wrong. So this solution comes in two varieties. One of it is based on our PLC range. The other is embedded into our drive product. So this is actually a pre-configured solution. So the PLC will be based on uh, as a standalone unit, which can be installed at any uh, location. The sensor themselves are mounted onto the motor, coupling or shaft, or a mixture of all three, and linked back to the PLC. So if you remember my previous diagram on components needed for predictive maintenance solution. So you have uh, the sensor as the condition-based monitoring device, the PLC to aggregate and collect data, and finally disseminate back through the operator through the HMI, which is pre-configured. So it can be sent also, it can also be sent up to the SCADA or to the customer's cloud database because it's using our PLC, so it's very flexible. And this brings me back to the first case study that I showed you, the Mountains example that I used earlier. So obviously, after the failure, the customer decided to investigate and they want to find a solution so that it will not happen again. So what do you know? They applied our SMC, SCM solution. So this is the solution that is actually used. We provided a number of sensors across three different fans. These sensors uh, were then mounted on specific part of the fan assembly, one at the motor itself, one at the coupling, and finally one at the shaft. So all the data is fed back to the PLC, which is non-intrusive as it has uh, no part in the cloning process. It's just there to uh, take in the vibration data from the sensors and present the result either locally through a HMI screen or through uh, the SCADA where the owner can monitor. So this is the photo that is actually taken on site. So the top photo actually shows uh, one of the sensors mounted on the motor housing, which is trying to show that it's very easy to install while displaying its uh, non-intrusive nature. The bottom left shows that the PLC is used as the data collector, uh, visual, visualization of the sensors also because it comes with the HMI. And finally, the two uh, display here, we shows the pre-configured HMI screen. We shows the status uh, in the color of green for normal, amber for possible change in vibration, and red for there's definitely an issue. So this solution actually gives a customer enough information to react accordingly. So after implement, implementation of this uh, solution, this is the feedback from the customer. It's actually very easy to install and it's a very easy way to get data from the machine to unlock 
a possibility of predictive maintenance. Uh, as we mentioned many times, it's non-intrusive. It doesn't impact or stops or affects the process, the killing process, the original process that the customer is going through. It has uh, no issue of integration with the site SCADA system due to the vast communication method we have via our PLC. And finally, it allows the customer to react in a timely fashion when an issue on the shop floor is about to happen. Okay. So next, I will touch on the data analytics and AI by our Mitsubishi product itself. For Mel IPC, uh, you can see on the left is Mitsubishi's version of uh, Edge Controller. So once again, I'll go back to my previous slide where I talk about what uh, it makes to be a predictive maintenance solution, which is condition-based monitoring device, data acquisition, data logging, and then uh, analytics of that data to pro provide meaningful information to give you the predictive maintenance information. So with Mel IPC, you're able to fulfill the later two parts. So what this product does is uh, we use this for data collection. And why is it good is because uh, it has very good connectivity to the shop floor. Obviously, not just on a Mitsubishi infrastructure, not just relying on that. It's actually able to integrate across many automation uh, vendors PLC range. Thus, it's able to unlock the potential of uh, predictive maintenance by providing an easy way to get data from the shop floor. An example on uh, where it's being used. So we can see that uh, we are using the edge computing to collect data from the shop floor. For this particular example, we actually host a digital twin on the Mail IPC, which is one of the ideal model on how the process should operate. This is actually collected beforehand. And with the digital twin, we can use real-time analytics to compare the real-time output from that process against the digital twin to give a feedback on any performance improvement suggestions and, of course, predictive maintenance. And finally, uh, Embedded AI, which we brand as MySight. Uh, this will be in many of our products, but I would like to mention two at this time. So based on our latest uh, servo, the J5 range, we are able to provide a failure prediction for bearing, similar to what was previously uh, mentioned by the SCM solution. And also we can do a belt failure prediction in terms of the belt tension. So all these are built into our J5 servo, which is using our own proprietary AI based on the machine learning and neural network. Another example that we see here is uh, used in our robots. So uh, predicting service life of a major part, which is uh, commonly used in preventative maintenance switching. But in this case, uh, we gone ahead uh, one step above it and we apply AI to it. So the physical force or the physical strain, the speed acting on each part of the robot is actually calculated from a base model and the drive data. So this is checked against the standard service life formula of each part. So what this means is actually uh, the robot calculates real time based on the actual movement, it calculates uh, the expected service life of that part. So for example, in generally the robot has, let's say 10,000 hours of runtime before the next maintenance. So for typical periodic uh, maintenance is after 10,000 hours, irregardless, did you use or not, you will start the maintenance. But uh, with this, actually after running the robot on the actual application and making, making use of the robot, you can find if you are using the robot at the maximum maximum capacity, meaning it's running higher speed, turning the maximum angle every time. You will base on this and compare with the built-in data that is provided by our drive, and it will make a calculation and recommend a shorter service hour, maybe, and after the internal calculation. So this is based on the AI that is built into the robot already. So besides this, we also detect uh, initial failure condition so using our very uh, original error detection technology, 
problems with the drive parts are detected before any abnormality happens in behavior. So usually you won't know anything, you won't see any difference until you see that, hey, uh, the robot is behaving very weird. So as uh, example from the harmonics drive. So usually you won't see that there's a damage to the harmonics drive until it's very bad. So this, uh, this actually requires no additional sensors to be installed onto the robot. It's a pre-learned error diagnostic function that is already installed in the robot's controller. So this very sensitive uh, error detection is only possible with the existing controller without any an analysis uh, add-on. So based, this is also uh, because it's based on our main knowledge because the motor is also by Mitsubishi Electric. So we have the drive data. So we are able to analyze it and create an original algorithm that is able to do the predictive maintenance. So these are the two examples where we have a new technology built into our product, which provide predictive maintenance. So to finish up my presentation today, after taking you through a predictive maintenance solution of the maintenance solution we have provided. So I think the main key point is that predictive maintenance is actually a facilitator in improving the performance of your asset. So this is the key takeaway that I hope you all get from my presentation. So uh, we know that uh, predictive maintenance is a very big growth area. Uh, and actually digital transformation is unlocked is unlocking uh, predictive maintenance. So digital transformation, transformation has been made easy by company like us, Mitsubishi Electric, where we provide mechanism for collecting data easily from the shop floor and then being able to unlock and decode it. And finally, providing a meaningful data back to the shop floor in terms of maintenance information. So, uh, I've come to the end of my presentation. So uh, I'll continue to answer any questions via email. So if you have more queries, uh, feel, feel free to email me so we can have more uh, in-depth discussion. Thank you very much for listening today and I hope you find this uh, useful. Be safe and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much.